parole hearing in Nevada for O.J. Simpson has concluded, and the uh, commissioner says they are taking a recess to deliberate. So it wasn't an on-the-spot, we heard what we needed to hear, and thus that's that. Again, I don't know if that's the way things go, but while uh, things are on recess, we take that as perfect timing to welcome into our show set back once again. Uh, the longtime host of The Amazing Race on CBS is directed and is starring in a new documentary called Le Ride. He is Phil Kogan. Good to see you, Phil. How good are you? Good to see you. Go very good, yeah. Now, we just uh, were talking about, you asked, because the last time you were here, you said that it becomes more of a man cave each time it's you come It's becoming more and more of a manly cave, although I just noticed there's a lot of alcohol on yes. display, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of consumption. I noticed that like mm -hmm. some of the same wine bottles that were on the yes. shelf when I was here two years ago, yes. they're still sitting there. And and I I don't know who does your dusting, but there's dust on your wine bottles. Well, my, uh, actual, <laughs> actually, the uh, comedian and actor uh, Michael Rappaport d does the dusting for us around mm -hmm. here because he lost a, uh, a fantasy football bet with me uh, uh, and had to clean up here on the Rich Eisen well, Show. Well, I'd like we, to speak to Michael about his dusting should. procedures. And, and you also said you guys have a beer every now and then, and I said, not really, but Brockman is, has a birthday coming up on Sunday. And I guess his age at 43 and you and and apparently i'm way off or i think you're spot on right yeah. chris how old are you going to be on uh, on sunday i'll be 37 on sunday. <laughs> 37 <laughs> so look 37 43 Kind of the same thing. Well, if this was another uh, Sorry game. Sorry about that. You look great for 86, Phil. Yeah, if this, by the way, if this was another game on, on CBS, <laughs> like The Price is Right, yeah. we, you'd, you'd have gone over and we'd have some nice parting gifts for you. Yeah, thank you. you. Know? Um, yeah, like some of your wine. So tell me about, yeah, I know. <laughs> tell me about uh, La Ride, the documentary that you you rode the 1928 yeah, so course, I, you I cycled love, it. I love underdog sports stories. I found this great book. It was about the first English-speaking team to ride in the Tour de France, and one rider in particular, a guy from my hometown of Christchurch, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And nobody, I, I'd never heard of him. Turns out he was a seven-time New Zealand champion. Um, and even pro riders that I know who ride for New Zealand, they'd never heard of him. So in 1928, he teams up with three Australians. They get on a ship. They go six weeks at sea with one set of rollers, you know, those training rollers, mm -hmm. six weeks at sea, go to France, turn up uh, in Paris, line up against the best riders in the world who completely wrote them off and said, what are you guys doing here? Why are you coming here with your antiquated bikes from down under? And in those days, the bikes were twice as heavy as they are today. They had no gears. They were heavy steel bikes. Most of the roads were unsealed. The, the, the course was about 1,200 miles longer than the modern course is today. And it just so happens that the 1928 Tour de France had the highest attrition rate out of any Tour de France in history. What do you mean? 168 riders started, 41 finished. <sighs> it, it was designed by Henri de Grange in 1903 as a, it was meant to be a race where his ideal race was only one guy would completely circumnavigate France and make it back to, from Paris back to Paris mm -hmm. in the Tour de France. That's how he wanted it. So these stages were insane. The winning time of stage nine, which is called the death stage, the winning time in 1928 was 18 and a half hours. <laughs> the winning time over the Pyrenees, over 20,000 vertical feet of climbing and 200 miles on that day. So it's not so much the 200 miles, it's the fact that they were climbing sure. as slow as five, six miles an hour up these mountains. How, what, what was your time in Leroy? Well, we the, were shooting a movie. It took us 23 and a half hours. Um, I've never been so completely and utterly shattered in all my life. I mean, we com we were delusional. We were we 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 really lost a track of, track of time. Um, we were riding up the Tourmalet, which is the most uh, famous mountain in the Tour de France ever, and we we're in the middle of the night arriving up there. Um, this this movie, <clears throat> what we decided to do, in order to honor Harry and his mates was retrace every mile, go through every town, stick to the exact schedule mm -hmm. uh, in 26 days, completing 22 stages, 3,338 miles, climbing more than 132,000 vertical feet on original 1928 bicycles with no gears. My follow-up question has to be, why? I'm Phil in Cogan, therapy. Why? Uh, I'm <laughs> in therapy. No, <laughs> so, like, uh, I mean, it... it, it to use the obvious analogy, this this, this is an amazing race that well, you did. I mean, an actual amazing opportunity that you took advantage of to I felt mimic a race. Yeah, I felt the story really had to be told. And because all the riders are gone and because all the witnesses watching the tour in 1928 are all gone, 
I thought the only way to really tell the story was rather than taking a traditional documentary approach from the outside and look back, mm -hmm. um, that if we put ourselves in the story and we went through what they went through, we could tell the story from the inside and then juxtapose when we wrote it in 2013 with what was happening in 1928 with archival footage. So we actually cut back and forth between their story and our story. Mm -hmm. The story is about them, but by us going through the journey, we were able to then, I think, articulate to the audience what it was like and how hard those races were compared to the modern Tour de France. And, and then we also uh, wanted to make it epic. We wanted to make it big. So we, we were the first documentary feature film to shoot with an F55 Sony camera in 4K. And then Ongino, which is a French lens company, loaned us over $400,000 worth of beautiful French zoom lenses, very fast lenses, lenses that could wow. shoot in the night. So that's why we've got it now in theaters around, actually it's in seven countries, but in the United States, people are able to see the film because we want people to see it on a big screen. You know, sure. we, we, we shot this in the what is the equivalent of super 35 millimeter film. It looks incredible. I mean, just incredible, just on a television screen. Well, Scott is... Shelley was the DP. Uh, I've worked with him since 1992. Uh, an incredible shooter, incredible stamina. But uh, this was not a story, Rich, that I could go out and sell. I, I, it was one of those stories that I had to go and make first before it you know, got selected for South by Southwest and, and uh, did really well at a number of festivals. It was one of those things where it was like, if we were going to do it, we had to do it our, on our own. So we raised a little bit of money, but it, we were very high end with the technology. But then as far as the crew, it was my mom, my dad, my wife and producing partner, my best friend Scott shooting backwards on, the, on a motorbike, an ex-California highway patrol officer, a friend of mine who's from Israel who's a, a great <laughs> shooter. It was, and my brother who did navigation. So it was, it was grassroots. It was, it was guerrilla filmmaking using the latest technology. And then what I will tell you is I will never try to shoot a film while I'm taking on such a huge physical challenge because that just about killed me and it was you know we almost had a mutiny in the crew well at least you had your next of kin right nearby phil yeah, that's Kogan. True. you know i mean at least you had that <laughs> yeah. uh phil Kogan, uh, the uh, host of the amazing race and the director and star of la ride a documentary that is just uh striking to say the least right here uh, on the rich eisen show why do you think cycling isn't as popular as perhaps you think it should be what do you well, think? well, in Europe it is. I mean, in 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 Europe it's 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 the biggest. Well, it is the biggest spectator sport in the world. I mean, if you and and there really is nothing like the Tour de France when you think that it's spread out over three weeks, that it covers the thousands of miles that it does, and all these little towns and all the you've seen the people that line these mountains that camp out days beforehand. Where what other sport do spectators get that close to their sporting heroes? Where they literally can reach out and touch them. Unfortunately, them. sometimes. And sometimes, is the problem. yes. You remember, remember Eddie Merckx was punched. Eddie Merckx, probably the greatest cyclist ever, 525 professional wins. So it's an extraordinary event. I think, um, you know, in, in America, it's actually a pretty big sport, but we also have some pretty extraordinary sports in America. You know, we right. have football and we have. We have uh, baseball. There isn't a lot of room for a, a sport that's really big in Europe to kind of muscle its way in here in America. But um, there's no doubt that we have some extraordinary riders in, in the U.S. And the U.S. didn't ride in the tour, which is interesting. They didn't ride in the tour until 1980. Uh, the British didn't ride in the tour until the 1950s. And so that's why this story to me is so pertinent about the first English-speaking team one New Zealander, three Australians, 1928. I mean, so they were way, way ahead. So I think in the future, we're going to see uh, people take more of an interest in American riders. I think it'll it'll grow. Well, I know this year's tour is is as exciting Epic, as it's yeah. come in, in, in quite some time. It comes to a conclusion over the weekend. Yes. And, you know, it's real tight. It's very tight, yeah. For the, 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 for the uh, first four riders, if I'm not mistaken, they're separated by about 30-something seconds. Room is barely holding the lead right now. But there is a time trial coming up. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, some of the mountain stages. I What I love about the Tour de France is, and, and one of the things that we really tried to get across with, with this film, is that it's so much more than just the race. It's the culture. It's a little like, bit like people who look at baseball mm -hmm. and they just look at the game. If they don't know and they don't understand the history and they don't understand those who came before, the Babe Ruths and all of those 
people who, who are a part of the history. When you watch baseball, you're watching it not only just for what you're seeing, but also for all the stats and for the history. And Tour de France has that element to it. Phil Kogan is here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'd like to take a 60-second break. We'll come back, talk a little Amazing Race. Yeah. It's such a popular... Coming back for season 30. Can unbelievable. You season 3-0, yeah. yeah. which is remarkable. And I'd like to use the cycling ignorance of the two uh, American uh, ignoramuses over there, Chris and Mike. Let's not let's not call them ignoramuses. Well, okay, uh, two <laughs> that's a little uh, harsh. Two sports really. savants. Well, I'll go in the opposite yeah, direction. Thanks. Yeah, good. Uh, they're they're cycling Jesus. ignorance. The guys that make you look good, Rich. Come on, let's be honest. There you they, go. They, they, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the best of their ability. I'd like to play the game of pharmaceutical or cyclist. Mm. Now, I'm sure you know most of the names of the cyclists in the well, Tour de France. Well, I know France. some, but you know, you never okay. know. I might get right. stumped. Well, I'd like. I think what I'd like to do is they can play. You can be a phone a friend for them, I, and, sitting and, across and the way. And the great news is, it's kind of a fifty-fifty anyway. <laughs> at that point. It is that yeah, a fifty-fifty and a phone a friend. I can all just at give once. you a second opinion. Phil Kogan is here. <laughs> Back in sixty seconds, we'll talk Amazing Race and pharmaceutical or cyclist. The OJ parole hearing is in recess. That's what's going on. Back in sixty seconds on the Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Phil Kogan is here. Uh, the Amazing Race on CBS is returning for season 30. That is truly unbelievable. What is the strangest sequence you have ever laid witness to in all those years well, of hosting that show? There are a Phil. number that just you stick out. Uh, Charla, carrying, uh, Charla, who was a small person, carrying a piece of meat that seemed to be larger than her, running down the street uh, in a challenge this huge piece of meat in Argentina. Uh, but perhaps one of the more humorous moments was when the teams were asked to transport big wheels of cheese from the top of a hill to the bottom, and the, the cheese-carrying devices that they have broke, and these massive wheels of cheese took off down the hill, and the teams were dodging these rolling pieces of cheese in Switzerland, and the locals who had had a couple of drinks were just, they just thought it was the craziest thing they'd ever seen. <laughs> these Americans like scattered all over the hillside with these big balls of cheese rolling down. And thank goodness there was a fence at the bottom because otherwise I think the cheeses would have made it yeah. all the way into downtown. And who knows, we could have had a, you know, there sort of could have been some calamities. What Now we've also had some athletes who have been on The Amazing Race, right? Yeah, had some... we had, uh, we, we've had uh, NFL players, we had um uh, NHL players, we've had baseball players, snowboard uh, guys, uh, professional uh, rodeo riders. Um, I think if out of out of the 29 seasons, we've only ever had a professional athlete, uh, professional athletes win once. Oh, we did have uh, Connor O'Leary with mm -hmm. his dad. He was a professional cyclist, and they won season okay. 25. The uh, or 24, I'm sorry, okay. season 24. But, it's unbelievable. But just being a professional athlete doesn't mean you're going to do well in an amazing race. No, I mean, look, when you, it, it doesn't matter how much money you've made as a professional athlete when your cheese-carrying device breaks in Switzerland. It's yeah, just going to happen. I mean, there's I nothing mean, you can do. do. And and more pro athletes are probably more you know apt to broing their cheese-carrying devices because <laughs> they're so powerful. <laughs> uh, are you ready to help these guys um, in – we did this last – two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, the same game? This, or? Well, what we did, it was either Pharmaceutical or Phenom, oh, based okay. on the Futures All-Star game. The, the the bright and the, the best and the brightest yes. coming up through the farm systems in Major League Baseball held a baseball game prior to the All-Star game I called see. the Future All-Star. So you had to guess just by hearing the name, is it mm. a Pharmaceutical or a Future All-Star? Now, in honor of you, the director and star of La Ride, the documentary uh, showing you riding the cycling the two, 1928 course of the Tour de France, which is coming to its 2017 conclusion this weekend. We're about to play pharmaceutical or cyclist. Drugs! Pharmaceutical or cyclist. or cyclist. I like the. Did you like the bell ring well, on I, that? I did. did you and, like that? And whose voice was that? Was it? I don't know whose that was. was Radio, that? Radio Bob. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. The voice of the rich. Uh, just a, a that voice. Was good. Okay, so Phil Kogan is here. Do is there music? Yes, we gotta have music. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so now, first up, mix show. Phil, now, Brockman or Del Tufo, you may use Phil Kogan. As a many, lifeline. As a lifeline. And, and, and remember, I'm a 50-50 because I might not know the answer either. <laughs> okay. okay. Brockman, okay. you were right. first the last time, so I should be able right, to go you're first. You're first, Mike Del Tufo. We have to alternate, though. Okay. We uh, we didn't alternate the last Can time. Can we stop okay. arguing, please? Okay. Phil Kogan's going to wonder okay. if we know what we're doing. We're ironing okay. out the rules. Oh, no, you guys know what you're doing. Look, every time I come back, this place is getting bigger and... <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the first word. Entresto. 
Entresto. Is Entresto a pharmaceutical or a cyclist in the Tour de France? Mike Del Tufo. Cyclist. Yeah, Brockman. I, I agree, cyclist. Actually, Entresto is a medicine for blood pressure that increases levels of certain proteins in the body that dilates blood vessels. Please consult your doctor before taking <laughs> Entresto. Entresto. Wait, really? That's crazy. Did you know that? Well, I've got some with me. I mean, I you got... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Brockman, you're Come first on. up. You're first up now. Okay. Yeah. Contador. Contador. Is Contador a pharmaceutical or a cyclist? Brockman. C cyclist. You can have, ask Phil Kogan if you need help. I'm going to wait on the lifeline. Uh, I say cyclist, too. I'm with Brockman on this. Phil? He's a cyclist. He, he is. is. Oh. Yes. Part of Team Trek Segafredo for Spain. And he's, Al he's, Alberto Contador. I think he's won twice, and uh, yeah, he's an extraordinary, probably the greatest climber. He just broke a record yesterday, actually, for the fastest climb uh, up one of the climbs yesterday. That's yeah, Phil Kogan okay. breaking All news right, yeah. and confirming All that right, Contador yeah. is not a he pharmaceutical. He bounces, bounces on the pedals when he climbs. It's okay. amazing to watch. Next one. Stybar. <laughs> oh. Stybar. S-T-Y-B-A-R. Pharmaceutical or cyclist? Mike Del Tufo. Pharmaceutical. Brockman. Phil Kogan's here if you need help. Yeah, Phil, what do you think on this, buddy? Is he a cyclist or pharmaceutical? Phil Kogan. You, you know, I. Uh, oh, it it kind of looks like a. It, it looks sort of like a German name. I don't recognize it. I don't recognize it as either. What do you think? He's got to get no help. I mean, yeah. No gonna, help. No, no help. help. That was, that okay. Was awful. Thanks, Phil. The, the I'm going to say he's a cyclist just for the help. Okay, of it. let's go with Phil. Cyclist. And what do you say, Del Tufo? I is said pharmaceutical. Ah, uh, Phil Kogan helps out Chris oh, Brockman. Yeah. Zdenek Starbar oh. for the Czech Republic, part Atta of boy. Team Quick Step, Atta, Atta boy, Quick Step Floors. Great job. Oof. Okay. That was a bit of a guess. I got to be honest Here with we you. Here we go. But, you know. Well done. Brockman's up 1 nothing. You're up first, Brockman. Brylinta. Oh. That sounds like a pharmaceutical. Brylinta. Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical. I'm, I'm on that. In Pharma. fact, Wait, you... do you take that? It's totally pharmaceutical. Well, it's, it's about, take that? It's no, about lowering the risk of stroke or serious heart problems after you've um, had a heart attack or severe heart. angina. Please consult your doctor before taking Brylinta. Wow. And yes. Amazing. Okay, next up. You're one behind, Del Tufo. You're up first. Emden. Emden. E-M-D-E-N. Cyclist or pharmaceutical? Phil, what do you think? Oh, what do you think? Cyclist or pharmaceutical, Phil Kogan. Oh, you put me on the spot with that one. Mm. Phil hey, Kogan. I, 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 Sounds I, a little go German. With cyclist. He says, go with a cyclist. You say cyclist? <sighs> Are you going to phone a friend and tell the friend he doesn't know anything? He's the director of Leroy. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Like, like, in this right, case, though. you got with I your say gut instinct. pharmaceutical. Brockman? Cyclist. Cyclist it is! <laughs> Oh, so, oh, Joe so. Van Emden, part of Team Lotto from the Netherlands. I was going to say German. As Brockman high oh. fives Phil Kogan. Yeah, Woo. I beat him he last time. He tried to give you the information. By the skin of my teeth on I that know. one. Last one. Try I and make win. a game of it. <laughs> Natesto. Oh, Natesto, that's... pharmaceutical or cyclist? Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical. It is nasal testosterone. <laughs> so a cyclist probably job, takes Brock. the test, though. Good job, Brock. Uh, after, after, by the way, consult your doctor after completing stage 14 before you take the testo. Nasal <laughs> testosterone will get you popped in the Tour de France. Yeah. Pharmaceutical or cyclist. Or cyclist. What do you think, Phil? I Well, I'm impressed. You, guys, that, did pr you guys did pretty well. Take yeah. that game back to Bertram. Should we put, should we should we pitch that this on to Bertram Van Munster <laughs> and Elise Doganieri, the see if creators? Like that one. They'd love it, right? Yeah. Uh, tell me about um, what's going on on the Smithsonian Channel, flying high with Phil Kogan before we uh, let you go here. So I, I'm from New Zealand. Yes, indeed. Uh, I was uh, asked to direct a one-hour aerial show over New Zealand, flying for four days, five days actually. Uh, over New Zealand, so every single shot and aerial of New Zealand, and uh, and I've always wanted to do a show about the personalities of a different of different countries. You know, what is it that epitomizes different countries around the world? So I shot a special uh, with twelve New Zealanders, including Peter Jackson, Sam Neill, my dad, some comedians, a guy who rounds up sheep with a drone, 
So uh, <laughs> it's it's a fun. Uh, so from the Academy Award winning director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, we see to his the guy whose sheep's her, rounding her, her up sheep with a drug. Okay, yeah. And they actually have a lot in, That's more. That's called in, running the gamut, Phil. They, they 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 have a lot more in common than you might imagine. Um, but but what I did was with Sam Neill was I went to his vineyard. He has a he grows beautiful Pinot Noir grapes, two paddocks. That's the name of the vineyard. And then with Peter Jackson, instead of talking about movies, I talked about his World War I plane collection. He has over 70 World War I planes, and we actually go flying in one of them. So the idea is with famous people is to kind of talk about things that they don't normally talk about. So please tell me one of Peter Jackson's planes is called the Precious. Please tell me that. That you flew it the should be right. You precious. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, you're well right. Well done, Phil Kogan. Nice. Yeah. Sam Neill, by the way, That's, the the that, actor played the uh, the Red October. Yes. Um, the the Red the October. Officer. Yeah. The 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 Red October defector who never saw Montana, which is one of the saddest lines. Yeah. Never. Remember that? See it. No. I don't. Come. You, have you never you, seen the Hunt you for never Red seen October? the, the I film? I, I don't think so. No. One. <sighs> p you see, he's the facility who asked for you. One you ping, gave him one ping. One ping only. You gave him one ping. He was in Jurassic Park. He was in Peaky Blinders, by the way. Great character yeah. in, in, in Peaky Blinders. Amazing actor. 1990. But, I was doing other stuff that year. Oh, 1990. Were ridiculous. you even born? You yeah, think of I'm 43, Phil? <laughs> I was trying to, I I was trying to be nice. And get, you know, it's, I wanted to, you know. Phil, love having you on, man. I wanted come, to make you feel better. Come back anytime. It, oh, how can people check out La Ride? How um, can they check it so out? So La Ride is in theaters all around the country. If you go to philcoganlaride.com, mm -hmm. you'll see where it's screening. And we're working with a company where you can actually demand a, a screening in a theater in your local town oh, if you want. And then the other uh, show, Flying High, on Smithsonian Channel, August 6th. Very good. Yeah, I'd love, love uh, you to tune in to see that as well. You got it. Phil Kogan here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, download our app. Please, just if, if it's a memory thing, just delete other apps. You don't need those apps. This app, The Rich Eisen Show app, you need that.